Today, I'd like to look at figure 16, which builds upon figure 15, which was the card configuration for patch chart 19. But before looking at the card for figure 16, there are a few housekeeping things to take care of. The printed blank card in the manual has an error in the complex oscillator section. The polarity function is not available on the final hardware card. So the corrected manual card would look like this. Here's a tip for the top section of the card, which, as you remember, mimics the top section of the easels 208. Just looking at those functions that have switches in general, no resistor between the input and output rows mimics the down position of the switch. Usually, but not always, the resistor conductance value of 3 mimics the middle position, and a conductance value of 6 the upper position. There are some exceptions, which I'll mention in later tutorials. Before I solder up the card for figure 16, let me point out a couple of modifications. For the sequencer, instead of the printed resistor values, I'm going to use 10, 8, 4, 3, and 0, that is no resistor, on stage 5. Also, instead of using a resistor conductance value of 4 for the pulsar's period, or rate function, I'm going to show you a little trick to create the equivalent of a variable resistor in its place. To get a variable rate of the pulsar, I use a resistor of conductance value 10 and place it on the inverter row and bridge over to the period of the pulsar. Then, taking a banana cable from the preset voltage source, blue output jack on the faceplate and placing it into the two card jack to the right of the inverter, I can use the preset voltage pot that is lit to control the rate, or in this case the speed of the echo. Here in his own words is Alan Strange's description of this echo patch. The echo is achieved by connecting the dual low-pass gate in series, so the envelope signal from gate 1 is routed through gate 2. For the simulated echo to be effective, turn down mix level channel A so the gates are truly in series. Gate 2, in voltage-controlled amp mode, receives its control voltage from the pulsar's ramp out. The echo rate is defined by the period, which may be adjusted to the performer's needs. In this example, I'm going to use that variable pot coming from the preset voltage. The variations in timbre will be determined by the sequencer voltage levels of, in my case, 10, 8, 4, 3, and 0. Acting as controls for the complex oscillator's timbre input with a processing setting of 8. The sequencer will be triggered by the pulsar so that each echo calls up a successively different timbre. And finally, I noticed another misprint. For the sequencer stages to affect the timbre, we must remove the resistor on the T-level of the complex oscillator. While this is not mentioned in the manual, it is essential to affect the patch as described. Let's listen to this patch. Here is the patch in patch chart form.